Okay, I think we're just going to get started. Morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining. Almost 600 people registered for the event, and um, so we're delighted to see such an interest. Um, a few people are still coming in, but as we're doing that, um, we can just start with a bit of housekeeping. So first of all, um, we're delighted to welcome everyone on, on, on behalf of myself and all the project partners. Thanks uh, to everyone for joining us today and to all of the speakers. My name is Shauna Sweeney and I work on behalf of Design and Crafts Council in Ireland. Um, we're going to start by saying that the session is being recorded today. So if we're not able to make all of the morning's event or tomorrow, and um, then you will find it on our social media and our website. Um, and Facebook page as well. So you can follow us on Crafting Europe and we'd be delighted if you would use the hashtag Crafting Europe throughout the two days. We have a live Instagram feed on the website that we'd love to see all of your posts up on. So please do keep sharing it throughout the two mornings. Um, we also wanted to say that for anyone that speaks Ukrainian and would like uh, it translated, we have that option in the interpretation button at the bottom of your screen. So you can click into the correct channel for you and the interpreters will be working and they'll be doing that both mornings. So hopefully for anyone that's joining us uh, in Ukraine that that works for them. If you have any questions and answers, we will be doing a Q&A at the very end of the day um, or the end of the morning event. So if you have any questions, please type those into the Q&A section or chat, whatever you prefer. And we will hold all of those questions to the very end. We'll let all of the speakers come on screen and we'll direct your questions then. Uh, for anyone who isn't familiar with Crafting Europe, we just wanted to give you a quick introduction to the project. It was obviously supported by Creative Europe and it was inspired by the need to build capacity within the craft sector across Europe. Uh, there are three main components or three main activities of the project. The first one, which you're going to hear a lot about uh, this morning and tomorrow, is Crafting Business which is professional practice training program offered by Crafting Europe. The second is iAtelier. It's a program of activities designed to encourage innovation by integrating new digital fabrication technologies into the craft practice. So that is led by Ireland's Limerick School of Art and Design, which is uh, within Limerick Institute of Technology. They just finished their open call for that uh, last week, but do look out on our website and our other social media channels to see in other partner countries, the open calls that will be taking place for iAtelier. And then the final component will be the research, which will primarily assess the economic impact of the craft sector in Europe. Uh, so the project began in October 2019, and it's going to be running until next year, and it will obviously take place across European countries. And we have nine partners involved, eight of them of which are uh, members of the organization of World Crafts Council Europe. So that's how they all kind of came together. Um, obviously, as I said, ourselves here in Ireland, Design and Crafts Council Ireland, we have Artex in Italy, the Crafts Council in the UK, Limerick Institute of Technology, also in Ireland, and CRT in Portugal. Uh, we've got EOI Fondas Arte in Spain and the Crafts Council Netherlands. Finally, the Handicraft Chamber um, of Ukraine, who are hosting the event today, and then the Georgian Arts and Culture Center in Georgia. So I am going to pass over to the president of the Handicraft uh, Chamber of Ukraine, uh, Marina Popovich, and she is going to say a few words um, of welcome to everyone. As I said, again, I know a lot of people are just joining or coming in as I'm speaking. The session is being recorded. If you have any questions, please put those into the Q&A. And finally, if you are joining us from Ukraine and you'd like to hear it in your own language, an interpretation button is available also. So Marina, I'm going to pass it over to you. Hello. Thank you so much, Shauna. Уважаемые коллеги из девяти организаций, из восьми стран, уважаемые партнеры, участники семинара и гости семинара, это, конечно же, большая честь быть сегодня здесь и открывать такое знаковое для всех нас мероприятие. Еще несколько лет назад мы и представить не могли, что наша с вами работа переместится в онлайн-измерение. 
Но реальность такова, и 2020 год принес нам очень много неожиданностей, сюрпризов в нашу жизнь с вами. Цифровая жизнь, цифровитизация, информатизация наряду с гиг-экономикой особенно повлияли на жизнь тех, кто находится под зонтиком ремесленничества. При этом, каким бы сложным ни казался этот этап, я уверена, он принесет за собой мощные трансформационные сдвиги, откроет новые пути взаимодействия, представит, предоставит нестандартные возможности, несущие в нашу с вами жизнь совершенно новые основополагающие и, возможно, даже радикальные идеи. И, конечно же, все это не минует и ремесленничество. Живое наследие ремесла, уникальные навыки, ноу-хау в ручном изготовлении, мелкое инновационное ремесленное производство с использованием, например, органического сырья или природных материалов однозначно стремительно пройдут через дигитальную трансформацию. Можно смело сказать, что это происходит уже прямо сейчас, и многим ремесленникам, конечно же, приходится прилагать большие усилия для перехода на другой формат взаимодействия с миром. И мы, как организация, конечно же, как всегда, будем рядом. Ну, конечно же, нет также сомнений на, этот, на тот счет, что, и, что будут и те, кто с легкостью проберется через это цифровое иголочное отверстие, и там за его пределами для них откроется совершенно иное цивилизационное измерение, в котором уникальность, эксклюзивность, неповторимость ремесленных изделий обретут дигитальные характеристики. Я знаю, что мое приветствие несколько такое футуристическое, но ведь как раз наша с вами работа тесно связана с теми, кто перемещается во времени и черпает креативную энергию из прошлого и инновации из будущего, а потом воплощает их в нашу жизнь в виде уникальных ремесленных творений здесь и сейчас. Я уверена, что вы согласитесь со мной, что современные ремесленники – это творцы с особым сознанием. И социально-экономическая значимость современных ремесленников существенно нарастает в наши дни. Сегодня многие из них – это совершенно новый тип социально-экономически активных людей. Они реализуют свою творческую деятельность, развивая инновации, ресурсосбережения, циркулярную экономику, локализм, космополитизм и так далее. А ремесленные изделия, и поэтому хотелось бы добавить еще, что у меня есть еще одна такая глубокая убежденная, что ремесленная экономика несет в наш мир процветание. Ремесленные изделия таят в себе эмпатию, целеустремленность, содержат холистический подход к жизни и заботу о людях, планете, экологии. Изделия имеют настоящую историю происхождения и рассказывают где и почему они были изготовлены, делают маркетинг честным и эмпатичным. Например, чувство материнской любви, заботы или отцовского восторга, придающие в момент создания уникальных детских игрушек или вещей. Или, например, ощущение теплоты и домашнего уюта, которые передаются в фарфоровой чашке или керамической посуде, созданной руками человека. Именно поэтому в наши дни уже по умолчанию принадлежность к ремесленничеству предусматривает творческий контекст, глубокий социальный смысл его деятельности, в котором ремесло дает, делает как можно больше для общего благосостояния людей, как материального, так и духовного. И именно ремесленники играют ведущую роль в расширении этих взглядов, вовлекая общество в эти ценности. Так ремесленники уже прямо сегодня создают новые такой сознательный язык потребления. Именно поэтому я убеждена, что современное ремесленничество способствует осуществлению сдвига парадигмы от продукта к высокой социальной ответственности, от инновации к трансформации. Такой феномен, как ремесло, является достоянием человеческой цивилизации, сохраняет, которая сохраняет свою уникальность, ценность, творческую изобретательность, креативное мышление и уникальную работу мастера. Я приветствую вас на нашем семинаре. Я передаю слово. Um, many thanks uh, to Shona and Marina for the introduction and inspiration. This major event, uh, gathering all Craft in Europe participants and World Craft Council Europe members, is truly important for, for artisans. The Craft in Europe project, with, which is already yielding all sorts of interesting results, is definitely a step toward new era of, uh, of craftsmen. Uh, so we are uh, happy to see you all. We're going to 
do this seminar with uh, with uh, nine organizations from eight countries and uh, let's dive into the seminar caroline will tell us about the backgrounds and the regions of craft business or of the hot house pro pro program so uh, the floor is yours caroline Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Um, and thank you, Marina, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, so I'm going to briefly talk about Hot House, which is where the framework of crafting business came from, and, um, and talk about the future of crafting business uh, for this year. So Hot House is a Crafts Council UK initiative initiative started in 2011 and we recognized at the point that we needed to support emerging makers uh, with a, their ambition to grow their craft businesses and we identified the reasoning behind why this support was needed to give emerging makers confidence to develop a business by giving them the business skills they need to be to make informed decisions. This program gives participants new connections, a peer support group, raises their profiles, grows craft businesses that support our UK economy, and grows the strength of the craft sector by becoming all important ambassadors for craft. The Hot House framework it starts fundamentally on recruitment and recruitment is key. We need to identify those that would make the most of the program that need it most fundamentally and also those that would work well together in a peer support mechanism and of course, advocate for quality of making and the end product. For us, we devised two cohorts, or two um, areas to work in, and these are designed to be the support network based on skills and disciplines. So we don't want um, all the ceramicists together. We want them to sort of mix and match with other discipline groups. The training, um, Hot House had 11 areas. We're starting off with the induction and then focusing on designing the future of a craft business. And then once they've thought big, we scale it down into an actual business model and then provide them with the skills around your finances and then how to present a business model. So giving them the skills to write and to vocalize their uh, business plan, we give them marketing tools, funding ideas, funding concepts, um, business growth um, about how to scale up, whether it's through websites, or, um, through SEO content, search engine optimization, um, and working overseas. We focus on creative thinking, so that whole development of a portfolio. And then we draw that out through the presentation of business plans. And then three months later, we have a reflection, a review of, of how do they feel, how they can reflect back and work forward. The peer support is, as I said, all important. And for us, we have networking events to get them to meet industry experts, gallerists, to break down the barriers of what it means to talk to other people about their business ideas. We have lots of group discussions, again, supporting that peer group. And for the first time, we ran in 2020, a collaboration, which was a swapping of ideas. So a participant starts a piece of work and then we ask them to share that or swap that piece of work um, with another maker in the group. And we decided to do this because in our virtual world, that was 2020, this was hopefully going to bring them closer together in that support mechanism. For us, we also have mentoring. 
This is where we have one-to-one -one tailored advice with industry experts. And then throughout the whole of the program, as I said before, they become ambassadors, our alumni um, for the future role models of craft. And shortly you'll be hearing from Abigail Booth and Max Bainbridge, founders of Forest and Found, who did Hot House in 2017. And though Crafts Council UK doesn't have a formal alumni, we do work really closely with those that go through programmes such as Hot House because we, we have such a strong bond with them and we spend all of this time and energy to support their businesses and uh, throughout the whole of their journey. So the alumni is really important to us and something for you to consider potentially in the future of anybody hosting a programme. How does an alumni work for you? So crafting business. So we took the fundamental framework of Hot House and shared this with our European partners, along with templates and tools to enable seven other European countries to run their own Hot House, meaning crafting business programs in 2020 and in 2021. Just to highlight the, the core structure of it, that's eight um, modules, we're going to call them. And um, the reason why I'm shaping it as modules now is because we're in a virtual world. And though it was devised initially on face-to-face -face activity. So we have the induction, all important inductions, getting to know each other. And as I said before, the business visioning and business mo mo modeling to help people understand a framework that they can apply finances to, and then shape the marketing, how they talk about it, how they communicate what they do to the wider public. And then having a broader understanding how they can find and access funding to help their business grow. Through this product development and understanding how to scale an enterprise and grow it in trade fairs and galleries. And finally, reflection. Present, presenting a business plan to the wider sector, to their um, support group and gaining feedback for that. So for us, it all started well and uh, in uh, the induction day in 2020. And it's, it's a really great initiative to bring everybody together, realize that where they come from across the country, what type of disciplines that they do, what connections that they might have, and also manage the expectations for the programme going forward. By the time March came around, we had already had four of our sessions, but there was a bit of a challenge. It turned into this format, and there was um, an idea of whether we pause our training and wait to see what happens or keep going. And for me, I felt it was really important to keep going. And so pivoted that learning experience, that framework into online learning modules. This meant shorter training sessions, much more regularly at different sorts of time frames, so that we can support those that are managing or juggling, I should say, childcare as well as other jobs. So though it was a challenge, it was definitely worth it. And you will hear from Pratam and Kramer, um, one of our participants later on this morning, and also Jill Sluis, um, who was one of our trainers, and they will share their experience of what it was like to sort of pivot and uh, go through this training program. So the outcomes of our crafting business or Hot House 2020 program, we had a lot of interest in applying and we selected 26 maker businesses. We had 48 experts involved with the program. 26 of them were mentors. We did 101 hours of facilitated training. And then on top of that, as I said, um, we had the mentoring, so that acquainted to 260 hours. There we provided 26 hours of one-to-one -one support to our participants, 
and nine hours of networking um, before, obviously, it became a bit impossible to do that um, digitally. We created five new online resources that we shared with the wider sector and 25 of our businesses completed the program and 25 business plans were created, which is a great success. So what does it mean for the future of crafting business? I think in pivoting that learning framework to online modules means that we can definitely provide an experience that is more accessible. And we really want to address that accessibility. But what we found through last year um, and through our recruitment that we have a, a, I suppose a preconception of a certain level of experience within running a business. And so we, we want to actually make sure those that might not necessarily have the basic um, skills, it could be in understanding finances, uh, using Excel, for example, that we, we want to support them fundamentally. So we're putting business first and craft second. And in the run up to our applications, which open next week, which is really exciting, um, we will support people applying by offering them a one to one short advice session to make them understand what it means to create an application. How did they draw out that business idea and put it into an application? And that application can be done by video or it can be done by text. We really want to hone out on that business idea and the, the practice that they do rather than of where they've come from. So it's very forward thinking. Um, and throughout the programme, we want to supply much more um, support, one-to-one -one advice, not necessarily through the mentoring. This is through business advice, making sure that everyone has the skills that they need so that we have everybody come out of this with a comprehensive business plan and, and also a support mechanism that they can go on their journey and have an exciting business to, to thrive with. So please spread the word. Like I say, we're opening up next week. And if there are any questions um, with regards to the crafting business in the UK, um, do pop them in the Q&A and I'll be around for the rest of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Caroline. Um, now I guess we could all feel the powerful background of the program. And now let's move to our headliners, Max and Abigail. They, they will tell us how it is to be alumnus uh, for the Hot House program and how Hot House contributed to their journey. Hi, Max. Hi. Hello. Abigail. Abigail. Hello. Let's start. OK, we'll share our screen. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah, it's great, Abigail, if you want to go into presentation mode. Yeah. Um, hello, so I'm Abigail Booth. Uh, I'm Max Bainbridge. Um, together we have a collaborative studio practice called Forest and Found, which we started um, in late 2014. Um, we come from a background of painting and sculpture, but after we graduated, we moved very much into a newly developed language of craft and have been working with traditional craft techniques in a very sort of contemporary way and pushing those techniques within textiles and woodworking, particularly wood turning and quilt making. Um, our work is um, predominantly sort of interacting with landscape and place and we create installations together, um, both collaboratively, but we also work independently as well. Um, and as Caroline said, we were on the Hot House programme in 2017. Um, back then, we were very sort of, we were very early on when we joined Hot House. We were, we've come quite a long way since then, and we'll talk a bit about that. Um, but we were very much in those early st stages of figuring out what we were um, going to be doing. So if we start by sort of talking a bit about what being a Hot House participant um, was like and what it actually offered for us. Um, we 
as soon as you join Hot House, you are sort of instantly become part of a very diverse peer group because everyone that comes to it is sort of, you're all early on in that point in your career and in where you want to go, but everyone's from a very different background. They're from all over the sort of UK, um, but they're also, they all have very different practices. So you, we consider ourselves artists working quite a conceptual way, but you're on the course with, on Hot House with furniture makers, jewellery designers, ceramicists. Um. I think that's a really important kind of point that Caroline touched upon before as well, is that it wasn't just kind of um, bracketing each sort of individual craft together um, and mixing that up was really, really helpful kind of straight away just to, just to kind of, just especially for us coming at it, not from a traditional craft background, but actually immediately gaining an insight into different practices, different ways of working, what, you know, different crafts, yeah, and I think it's, that's just one of the most nourishing things that we've had sort of going forward. Um, I just think it allows you, you all then come to that programme with very different knowledge and skills. Um, and it allows you to really shop, uh, swap and exchange in terms of someone might be really good at photography, someone might be fantastic at video, someone might know loads about accounting, um, already this means you get to you really share all of that knowledge um, and you become you just enrich your skill set and that's kind of that's that's just within the kind of groups and the um, cohorts that you're then in that's you know that's kind of a, you know that's sort of not getting into then all of the sort of programming and everything that you do on the um, on the yeah. hot house program so there are kind of two strands to the hot house program that are we found really useful um, the main one was just the real practical business support um, you grad a lot of um, people on our sort of cohorts on Hot House with us had literally just graduated. We came at it four years after we'd graduated. It took us a while to sort of get into what we were doing. Um, but it's very much you, when you graduate from an arts degree or a crafts degree or whatever background you've come from in that training, you often lack the actual practical business support elements. So things to do with finance, marketing, all of those things that you just don't know anything about. And that was sort of amazing to get all of that information in one place and to ask the questions that you kind of feel stupid asking hmm. it was um, a really yeah that was that's a really important point is that that kind of the environment you're then in and the sort of the different um speakers and guests that they bring in to kind of host the different sessions it's just it's a really kind of safe environment hmm. that you don't feel stupid um asking the kind of really basic simple questions that maybe you hadn't even considered before um, there's also a sense of that holistic support for your creative well-being. Um, so it's not just about that pure practical business element of it. There is also a nurturing um, or it's a safe space to actually think about where you are creatively in your work. Are you doing what you really want to do or do you have much bigger goals, long term goals that you want to push for creatively? And then how do you actually make those happen using all of that business knowledge that you're gaining how can you actually be really strategic about um and sort of plan and strategize for how you want to creatively get from a to b um, which i think was really important yeah um it also provided us a platform um to actually promote and support our work and ongoing projects so the crafts council as a whole while we were on the whole hot house program really promote everyone within hot houses sort of they promote your work um, which again is invaluable. Um, um, so in terms of then what the Crafts Council as a whole is then offering you and being part of that hot house kind of family, um, is you, you know, you're then exposed to a whole sort of um, range of industry contacts and um, even just kind of going onto the um, Crafts Council directory, the amount of people that then are constantly looking through that, that to include people in projects and are using it as a real directory to, to just to, to, to look for um, interesting people to work with in, on projects. And then I think really what the sort of thing that became really important about Hot House is that you become an ambassador for the values and practice that the Crafts Council represents. And so there's this sense that collectively um, your whole cohort and everyone who's gone before you within Hot House and who is to come after you become part of a group of artisans and practitioners who really do represent true quality in craft making and there's a sort of sense of pride and ownership in in your sort of industry and so I think that's also really important. Yeah I think um, 
you know, in, in previous hothouses and uh, people, um, even after the program had finished, I know that people had got together to put on ex like group exhibitions and shows and work together on projects from Hot House, uh, you know, across the different um, cohorts and everything, and just keeping that sense of um, I don't momentum. Know, yeah, yeah, and what you've built on the program, keeping that going, and then having that kind of like ownership and and sense of identity to then put on different mm. projects. So, in terms of how Hot House went on to contribute to the development of our career after it ended. I think it's a really invaluable platform right at that early stage in your practice. And um, that's not to say that doesn't mean that you just have to have graduated. You've got lots of people on Hot House who have come to craft as a second career. Um, but I think for everyone involved, it's very much that it's really feeding into that real early stage of you making decisions about direction. And that was a lot of the focus of the program was about really deciding and focusing on where you wanted your work to go, what you, you know, big, think big. And then like Caroline said, scale back and focus on how you can actually make that happen. Um, so it gave us, we left Hot House with a lot of confidence in, and direction in terms of thinking about opportunities we could apply for and seek out. Uh, again, just the, the kind of continued support after, um, after the, the program had finished um, to, to, to look to things like Collect Open, um, you know, being able to talk to, to Caroline, but also other members of the um, Crafts Council, just in terms of uh, su su yeah, yeah. support in applications. Um, so we went sort of directly on from Hot House. We applied for the Crafts Council's Collect Open um, to put on an ambitious sort of body of work and produce body of work to be shown during their Collect um, Art Fair. Um, and that was a really big stepping stone for our career in as much as it just allowed us to think big and produce on a really large scale, which is something we've wanted to do for a really long time. Um, and then having got that opportunity, that then led a few years, sort of a few, sort of one or two years later, we then applied for the Gerwood Makers Open, which is, again is a funded opportunity um, to really push research and development in your work. And I think Hot House just lays the sort of foundations for actually having a sustainable practice in terms of figuring out how to make it sustainable in income, but also how to then dream big, think big, and apply for those sort of opportunities that might then bring funding into your practice. And so all of those kind of stages to, to like getting to Collect Open and then getting the Gerwood Makers Open, they were all kind of um, sort of like markers in our career. And we, you know, the way you kind of, all of those kind of applications and the processes to get to those, that it, you were then learning things to implement into your business sort of plan and structure and how you turn your practice into a kind of sustainable business looking forward. So, yeah, because I think you sort of realise that you actually have to future proof what you're doing um, in terms of you can't make everything happen overnight. So it's how can you make those smaller gains um, in terms of strengthening relationships with galleries or strengthening strengthening relationships with clients that you know financially you're bringing you've got a slightly more reliable element of income um, that actually supports sort of then the research that's going into more ambitious projects. So it kind of opened our eyes into the importance of kind of laying down those foundations and building those relationships that will last and have a kind of longevity that can run alongside you know, maybe more experimental, maybe more kind of ambitious projects that, um, you know, that, that those foundations then allow you to, to take on because you have, um, have a kind of network of people you're working with. And then I think being affiliated directly with the Crafts Council as an alumni of the Hot House programme, it actually builds confidence in your work by external partners who you're seeking out to potentially work with. Um, I just think it gives you that sense that they know you've come through a programme that's really supported you, that the Crafts Council have sort of put, invested within your practice. Um, and I think that just builds a really great amount of confidence, both in ourselves, but also in people that you're looking to work with. Um, and it also, because Hot House starts introducing you to a network of industry contacts, as well as your sort of wider network of your peer group that you were on the Hot House with, um, you can that you just then get that sense of actually how important net networking is and then you can build on that independently mm. as you go forward in your career but those values that you learned very early on in hot house you're applying all the time and again i think it's important to say that within the program when when we did it 
there was there was kind of like you know it was kind of built into to practice those kind of networking things right from the kind of ground up like from the very first day you met everybody you were having to introduce yourself you were having to explain and talk and and sometimes that doesn't feel like that's going to be a big deal but actually when you're in a room full of people that you've never met and you have to start talking about yourself you kind of start to realize actually this is an area i'm in, i might need to work on or actually this is a, an area i'm really i'm kind of you know that i'm quite strong strong in so that that kind of importance of, of building networks and and how you kind of interact with people going forward mm -hmm. is something that is really worked on from the very first day. And so that kind of leads into the importance of the Crafts Council community as alumni um, and that idea that you are part of a continuing network of makers. We're still good friends with a lot of people we were on Hot House with. We also still try and collaborate um, in terms of putting on shows or just we are always asking each other advice. Um, so we were sort of successful in getting the Gerald Makers open a few years ago and um, people we were on Hot House with have then sort of come to us to ask for advice about the application process, the interview process and vice versa. It's, all, it's a very sort of reciprocal process in which you can, you just have that level of trust and knowledge that you can go to um, people and ask for advice. And um, so we always continue to support one another and share resources and then, yeah, exchange advice and skills. Um, and those connections, what we found quite interesting, it's not just sort of kept to the participants on your particular cohort. Um, it extended to participants who have been part of Hot House previous to us and also those who have been part of Hot House since us. And you kind of feel that automatic ability to approach people that have been on Hot House because it's just a common, it's something you have in common. So there's just the barriers are taken down. You don't feel quite as nervous, you know, about saying, you know, I've seen you've been part of this program before. Can we sort of get in contact and ask for your advice? So the team, like the whole, the whole um, Cross Council team um, have been um, really, really um, supportive since we took um, part in the, in the Hot House program, and they kind of, you know, they're, they're, they've they've made it. They make it very clear that either it's in well, not so much at the moment in person, but via um, email or phone calls, that they're always there just to kind of just as a sounding board, as advice. You know, they've been really amazing for um, for references and things like that for when you're applying for opportunities. So that kind of the, the knowledge that you are you are getting that continued support and it's kind of like it does, you know it, it's not as kind of formal as, as 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 other kind of places maybe might be but you, the fact that you can just reach out and just say look i'm struggling with this or what do you think of this as a kind of as a proposal or we were thinking of applying for this do you think it's the right kind of fit yeah and i think it's really nice that members of the team sort of are always there in terms of the events where you might have an exhibition on or, and I just think it's that level of in-person support that is at the moment a bit sort of in flux because of COVID. But um, prior to that, at all exhibitions we've had, you know, there's this sense of genuine support from the actual Crafts Council team, whether they're happy to promote the show you're in or just whether they happen to be there on the opening night. Um, it's just a really lovely sense of familial um, level of support that's very natural and informal which I think makes it um, a really lasting sort of relationship um, and they've also provided a huge amount of opportunities to be involved in talks and workshops and events that feed back into the ongoing hothouse program but also into the wider craft community so that you feel like you are actually giving back um, given that we were given the opportunity to be on hothouse you then sort of are able to sort of feed your skills, your new brain skills back into that wider craft community. Um, and then, yeah, that sense that they can act as professional referees when applying for creative opportunities, I think is really important. Um, I think that's helped us. We both um, have become Quest scholars as a result. Um, and that's another program that's there to support craft makers, but it just means that you've got that level of, um, yeah, professional backup and guidance and support. Um, we were also invited to participate in interviewing upcoming applicants for Hot House, and I think that was another very important experience that just allowed us to grow our skill set skill set within a very safe environment. So you were working with the Crafts Council team on an interview panel, which is something neither of us had ever done before. But going forward, that sent it just builds on your mm. on your skills continually. Yeah, because again, it's it's offering you opportunities 
that you have probably you know you've never done before we've never been on um, interview panels and you know it was it was it was again something that was quite sort of nerve-wracking going into but then you kind of you go through the process you understand how that works and you sort of you get an idea and an understanding that that is something that not only you can do but is incredibly rewarding um, mm. and being able to sort of be part of um, that whole process of a next generation of um, craft makers and, and artists coming up was yeah it was it was it was great yeah and I think that's about it so thank you very much for listening I hope that's been um, yeah good and informed yeah thank you thank you uh, Max and Abigail I'm sure that your story has inspired the participants of all countries and that it will be further strengthen the alumni community in each country hopefully. Mm -hmm. It might even trigger an international cooperation between alumni. Thank so you, thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. The past year was not the easiest in terms of traveling, but now, today, and tomorrow, we will have a unique opportunity to have a virtual trip across eight countries. We will learn about insights, breakthroughs, and business transformations. We will learn about specifics of each project implementation. Thanks. Yeah. I think I'm OK. Can you see my screen? Yes. 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 Okay. Hopefully this will work. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, uh, and uh, thank you for um, the opportunity to talk to so many people um, across Europe today. So delighted to be here. Um, so I led the Crafting Business Ireland program. Um, and uh, I'm Gillian Barry. Um, I'm Head of Innovation and Enterprise at Limerick Institute of Technology in Ireland. And we collaborated, of course, with Design Craft Council in Ireland on the programme that we ran um, late last year. So I'll just go through some of the insights of that programme. So first of all, oh, let's see if this works now. Um, so this was our team, um, myself and my colleagues in LIT. Uh, so Derek, Eleanor and Michael all working um, on this project. And of course, thank you to Susan Holland, Ema Fern, and of course, Shauna Sweeney here as well, who worked with us on developing the uh, programme and running the programme here in Ireland. So very quickly, just uh, a small bit about LIT. We are a higher education institute. Um, we've about six and a half thousand students um, and we're multi-campus, we're all around Ireland. Um, but we also have the largest portfolio of enterprise and incubation centres and, uh, and we work with lots of different entrepreneurs um, and, uh, you know, and, and practitioners and um, uh, people across uh, the whole, uh, across all of our campuses and not just students, we also work with um, the general public, so lots of different people. Um, this is just a map of Ireland to give you uh, just a visual on our enterprise centres and, uh, and our reach across um, the whole community. In addition to this, we work with um, agencies and lots of stakeholders in the ecosystem to support people who want to start a business, who want to grow a business across lots of different sectors. And, um, and we're really great at collaborating and partnering to help ensure the best outcomes for the people that we support. So we run lots of different programs, events, initiatives um, to support the ecosystem, uh, to support our, uh, the entrepreneurs, the crafters, designers, uh, but also lots of different types of um, uh, startups that we work with. And we work with young people, um, we work with students, researchers, and we work with the general public. So we have a diverse por portfolio. So just to give you a quick example, um, we run startup clinics, mentoring clinics, um, and we kind of support everybody from ideation um, to impactful um, uh, solutions, uh, like when we're looking at the global goals for sustainable development, for example, um, right through to our crafting business incubation programs and acceleration programs, as well as innovation. So we often talk to our, uh, the people that we support about where 
um, what key skills and tools they want to develop. Um, and, you know, being able to come up with ideas to, you know, work on product development, recognizing opportunities, leadership, teamwork, strategic development, communication, of course, being one of the critical ones when somebody's trying to communicate what their product is, marketing and finance, customer service, networking, relationships and collaboration. So it is a lot. But what we do say to people is, you know, you're developing these skills over time and you can also tap into teamwork and delegation. And, uh, and we work a lot um, on each of these skills on, on, on our programs. So I mentioned we've got a diverse group of people. We work with artists, designers, filmmakers, but we also work in uh, you know, healthcare and food and lots of different sectors. And actually that diversity has really helped us develop some fantastic uh, uh, programs of support over the years and um, with some award-winning entrepreneurs in our portfolio. So we have a really healthy network of um, uh, companies, entrepreneurs um, uh, that we work with. Um, and that's really important. So I'm actually going to showcase some of our participants' uh, work as we go through the slides here. But um, we, when we look at entrepreneurship, we look at, um, uh, you know, entrepreneurship is a big vision, act of creativity. And we do say to, um, you know, we've got a school of art and design and sometimes they don't think about the business side. They don't think about starting a business until kind of later on in, the, um, in their program. And we do say like entrepreneurs, like crafters, designers and artists, all kinds of entrepreneurs, they create, um, uh, you know, value for others. And that's important to bear in mind. OK, so quickly, our um, uh, program. Um, so as Caroline outlined, we had our induction, business visioning, modeling, marketing, finance. So we had all the different modules, um, but we were online uh, from the get go. So unfortunately, a lot of our participants have never met each other in person, in real life. And we're really excited, actually, but when we can actually do that. Rather than going into the detail of the programme, I'm going to share some insights because Caroline has already talked to you about what the programme detail was about. So we surveyed all of our clients um, and uh, what came back actually was 81% of the participants said at the start of the programme, they really knew what gaps that they had and what they wanted to get out of the programme. So they knew they wanted to get support in marketing and finance, branding, developing their network. Um, and some of them said they knew where they knew what they wanted and they knew when they wanted it, but they didn't know how to get where they needed to go. So at the end of the programme, we had 92% said they had actually identified new and unexpected areas in their business development. So they, were, they came in with a view that they kind of knew where they wanted to go, but whilst on the program, they realized that there was a lot more that they could do. Um, and what was great and powerful was that everybody said that they had an action plan, that there was things they were going to do to, imp they were going to implement to develop their business. Um, we did a lot of people as well say that they were not going to create jobs, they just wanted to, um, uh, be a professional practitioner on their own at the start of the programme. But by the end of the programme, 61% of people said that they were going to create uh, uh, jobs. So based on the numbers that they gave us, it's around 30 jobs in the next three years. And they also estimated um, about 1.7 million in combined annual turnover by 2023, which is fantastic for the makers community here. Um, we got some really positive feedback uh, just to share with uh, anybody looking to go on the programme here. Um, so the world of business can be a very intimidating place for crafters, um, but, you know, delighted with the programme. Um, highly recommending the programme um, and thank you for the opportunity uh, to be able to uh, take part in the programme. And of course, saying some met some brilliant people on it, which is absolutely key. The peer to peer network is a really, really important part of the programme. So they left the programme uh, very happy. So we were really happy about that. But we got some additional comments as well about, you know, some people felt that their self-confidence was low in terms of business skills um, and they really could have done with some additional support. So we look at that. Um, sometimes the finance could be a bit technical. So we want to make sure that we give everybody opportunity to be able to consume something that's very technical and different to what they were used to. Um, uh, longer breaks on Zoom, so we're all getting used to online world. Um, some people looked 
to you know maybe have a longer program because um they i suppose they felt that there were some things that were really interesting to them and they would have liked to have spent more more time on that um slides in advance as well was really good so finally um we had lots of things that worked well the breakout rooms having really good systems in place to enable good feedback having the program spaced out as well over a couple of months meant it was like a venture project so that was really important um, and then introduction for the, to tools that the participants could use after they finished the program. So business model canvases, value proposition, um, toolkits, things like that, product development toolkits. That was really important. And more, more than anything, this peer-to-peer -peer network. So even though we were working online, we knew the group had a WhatsApp group. They were supporting each other. They were looking forward to meeting when it was safe to do so. Um, and we felt that that was you know, a really important part of the programs, developing that network so they can support each other when we finish. So that's it. I've definitely gone over time. I'm so sorry, but we, you know, it's very important to stay connected and we're looking forward to running the next program and uh, happy to take any questions later as well if that's uh, on the agenda. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, Julian. And next, Coral. Coral will tell after you, Julian, from Ireland. Yes, yes so I'm delighted to have Noel mm -hmm. and Malu who are going to present as participants from Ireland. So I think Noel is online there. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? We can. Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, good morning, everybody. And, and thank you for this uh, opportunity um, this morning um, uh, to share our story. So my name is Noel Donlin um, from Ireland. And um, I met my business partner, Paolo Bello Italian on Facebook in uh, 2015. And um, shortly afterwards, uh, we met in Italy at an exhibition and we forged a strong relationship and we launched our company in uh, 2018. So what we do is um, I'm going to share some images of, of our work here just to explain. Um, we are decorative artists and um, we decorate uh, people's uh, homes and uh, uh, businesses with artistic decoration. And the three elements of that would be bas relief sculpture uh, is the first image. And uh, this is all sculpted freehand directly onto a wall or a panel. We do painted decoration, whether it be on ceilings, walls, canvases, etc. And uh, we also work in gold leaf. Um, we are traditionally trained uh, artisans Sorry, Noel, uh, but, we can't see your images there. Are you sharing your screen? Do you want to oh, share yes. a screen? Oh, sorry. Oh, Can you see that? Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. So um, um, we uh, work in a contemporary manner and um, we, we, um, we uh, uh, decorate people's homes and businesses with, with uh, art artistic uh, uh, decoration. So... Um, the, as I said, we, we, we started in 2018 and uh, we launched in Decorex in London, where we uh, uh, were awarded Best International Exhibitor. And we didn't have any uh, support, I suppose, or didn't even know about any support. And um, that opened up a lot of doors to us in, to interior design companies in, in London. So... Um, when I became aware of the crafting business program, it was perfect because we just had finished a large project in London and the crafting business program uh, was a perfect way for us to understand how to run our, a business. And because we were uh, both my business partner and myself are, are independent, um, we uh, uh, had never had a business partnership, uh, so to speak. So what we got out of the crafting business program was um, the, the, the steps to proceed to create a sustainable business in a structured way. And the finance aspect of it was excellent. Um, one of the things I would, uh, that I've given feedback on the program is that the, um, that the, um, uh, some of the language in the course can be too corporate sometimes. 
So what I would uh, say is that um, if there was an example given of um, uh, like a case study so that you could follow uh, um, a, an artist or artisan through, throughout the whole process and that way the lingo uh, and the language um, would be easier understood by, by artists. Like the thing about it is, to cut to the chase, we all start off in this art, artistic artisan role because of our passion but uh, that passion will soon dwindle if we are not getting a, a good monetary return for all our hard work and effort and I really believe that um, providing courses like Crafting Business Europe can really uh, solidify um, a, a business and help them with funding uh, with grants for shows uh, like Decorex was an international trade show. We got we got aid with that from the Enterprise Board of Ireland, etc. Um, so our ambition for the future is that we will have um, uh, studios, working studios in Ireland, Ireland and Italy, and that we will uh, work on site as well. And that maybe in the future that we could uh, have collaborations with uh, Troy Studios in in Limerick, the film studios or LSAD or, or uh, have uh, internships, et cetera, there like that. So that's it, thanks for your time. Thanks, Noel. I think at the very beginning, um, we weren't able to see your slides. If you want to quickly flick through them again, just oh, while okay. we're getting our next presenter ready. But um, Okay, yeah, no problem. Just so everyone can get uh, an insight into your, your work. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been on Zoom. So uh, here we go, crafting business. Um, why is that? I'm actually, what, no, while you're getting ready there, um, and we're waiting for Malu, yeah, one of the feedback, and oh, you have it up there. I'll wait. Yeah. So, this is an example of, of our work. We do like painted decoration, uh, murals, trompe l'oeil, um, gold leaf. Uh, this is an example of our contemporary um, sculptural work. Uh, we work with all natural materials on walls or ceilings. Uh, this is a contemporary example of our work as well. So the materials and techniques that we use are what the Romans and the Greeks have used. And we're, we're bringing it to a really contemporary form. Uh, this is uh, the ancient techniques of uh, iconography, which is uh, uh, polishing, the, uh, that's used in iconography, which is polishing gold leaf and uh, using the correct materials. Um, this is Skyliola, and again, uh, you can see that uh, uh, we work from traditional uh, to, um, to uh, contemporary uh, ways. Anyone, any questions? That's brilliant, no, no, well, well, that's perfect. We'll get Malou to um, get her presentation ready, but just to say that we've included all the speakers' bios and their links to websites or social media on the crafting business registration page so if anyone wants more information we can obviously put the links into the chat here as well and Noel maybe you want to put your website in there too but just in case anyone um, is looking for that it's all on the crafting europe website too so Noel if you're okay to stop sharing I will let Malou have a, a go that'd be great perfect thanks a million everybody hi everyone uh, my name is Malou and I like to essentially, um, as opposed to Noel, I'm a brand new business. Um, I do natural dyes. So at the moment, my business, Colorine Made, offers naturally dyed accessories. Um, I also do workshops, both in English and in Spanish. Uh, at the moment, they are online, of course. And um, I've started uh, just now doing ink inks for drawing uh, made with uh, plants and insects. And hopefully my first naturally dyed um, capsule collection made in Irish linen will be launched later this year. So I started this business because um, it, for me, it's a way to merge my passion for color, which I've had since I was a kid, my love of plants, which I um, discovered later in life, and my textile heritage, both my great grandmother, my grandmother and my mother have worked in textiles. And even though it took me a while to uh, find that calling, I, it, I definitely have it. So I, it was a way to merge all these things into a business that is based on regeneration. Natural fibers are great for 
they can be great uh, ways to actually help with um, climate change mitigation. Uh, so by growing and great um, by growing plants for fiber and uh, having animals for grazing animals in a holistic way, we can actually regenerate the soil. So that's very important for me. And um, so it all kind of en encompasses what I want to do, which is putting uh, color on textiles in a very sustainable, regenerative way. So before I started the crafting business program in September last year, I was feeling, um, as Julian has already um, kind of talked about, I was feeling a lack of direction. I knew where I wanted to go, but I wasn't sure how to get there. I had very bit, little business knowledge. I was not aware of the opportunities uh, available to me. I was paralyzed by a lack of cash flow and I was feeling isolated, not only because we were on lockdown, but also I had, um, I guess, the misfortune of having moved to Ireland from Mexico one week before lockdown. So I didn't really know a lot of people and much less people in the crafting sector. So I felt like I was out of place, really. Um, so during the program, uh, the stuff um, that I got from it, uh, as I think Gillian and Noel already talked about, uh, business concepts, but they were adapted to the lifestyle of a crafter because I had done uh, business programs before, but they were not craft focused. So I always kind of felt out of place, like it didn't really apply. A lot of things didn't really apply to me. So with the crafting business program, I felt like I could actually, what I was learning that I could actually put it into practice and it would uh, be, be applicable to my business. Uh, we got the business model canvas too, which has been great, and I keep referring back to it uh, ever since I put it down on paper. Uh, finance and pricing strategies, which was nothing, which was something I had no idea about before. <laughs> Funding opportunities. Now I know what kind of um, opportunities there are for me here in Ireland to make the most out of um, my business. Uh, something very valuable that I learned is that there's a business model for every business, regardless of the size or of the objectives. So even if um, we're not going to make a multinational giant corporation. There is a business model for us if we're going to have a small business, how to run it in a sustainable way that it actually, you know, allows us to live out of it. So that was really, um, I guess, soothing to know. Uh, it was great to know that pivoting is okay, that it's not uh, wrong to change of idea, to, you know, go in a different direction. And the network of creations of creators that are on a similar journey, that was great. Even though we haven't actually met in person yet, um, it's great. We have the, as Gillian mentioned, we have the WhatsApp group and we support each other. Actually, um, two of my um, fellow participants actually helped me or, or encouraged me to start doing natural inks. So thanks to them, today I'm actually starting doing naturally, natural inks as well. Um, so that's thanks to the program. And so into the future, uh, well, now that I have that support system, I, I want to keep, obviously, we want to keep uh, encouraging each other and growing together. My business model canvas is a roadmap and it guides my decisions, but it allows for flexibility. And so it feels like I know where I'm going, but I can always kind of tweak my plan to you know, adapt to whatever comes ahead because we don't know what's coming. Uh, I feel better prepared to take advantage of opportunities and I feel like I'm build building solid foundations for a sustainable growth. So thank you very much, Guru of Mahog Agat and gracias. Yeah, thanks to all our Irish speakers, Julian, Noel, Malu. <laughs> now we move to, uh, on to Spain, Laura. Hi, Laura. Everyone. Yes, hi. I'm going to share my screen. I don't know if you see it. Not yet, Laura. No. Oops. No, sorry. <laughs> I'm going again. Now you should see it. No. No? You don't see it? No, no, not. Not yes, no. Strange. Okay, I'll try again. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes? Okay. Yes. 
So I'm going to change to full screen. You see it now? Yes, it's okay. You see the full screen or also the next slide? We can just see it with the next slide as well. I think last time you went into. Yeah, I'm going to change that. Um, now. Perfect. Yeah, great. <laughs> so let's go with Spain. Uh, uh, hello to everyone and a big hello from Spain. Uh, we are going to share our experience here. We call the crafting business program, Programa de Creación de una Empresa Artesana. That means setting up a craft business. And I'm going to tell you about our experience. So our program started on the 15th of September and ended on the 30th of November. Uh, it was done online. We wanted to do a, a physical um, event, um, a course training program, but we had to switch to the online models due to the pandemic, of course. And we had the, uh, nine training units. You will, I will explain later, we, instead of eight, what, which was the, the, the hot house program that we were transferred into the crafting business. We had uh, 50 hours of training and we added two hours of mentoring. That means that we saw that uh, as people were not meeting together in a physical space, we saw that there was not so much interaction with the tutors and we felt that they had to have like some, um, some counseling also. So we offered them one hour mentoring with the program director, and then they could choose one hour more with the training unit or, or module where they felt they needed to have like one hour by themselves with the training, with the trainer, sorry. So uh, these were our training um, uh, trainers. The program was directed by Juan Pastor, who is a, um, an expert on creative businesses. He was the program director and he also had uh, several units like the business models unit. And at the end, we had like a, a, a sharing, sharing uh, uh, module where all the participants shared the experience and, what, and their outcomes um, and their business plan models. Then we had also finance, commercialization, marketing, internationalization, product de development as anyone else. But uh, we saw that it was very important to adapt to these times and we added a new unit devoted to digitalization because we felt it is, this was very important as we saw during the, the, the lockdown and the pandemic. And uh, I had to say also that uh, the finance uh, unit we we made it double because we saw that this is an issue where many craft makers have uh, some issues with it because it's sometimes the most difficult part to see the finance uh, model of a, a business. So, um, the sorry, we had more than one hundred applicants and we select 30 of them and 29 finished the program. We had uh, 29 enthusiastic craft people, designers, makers, we had several different profiles. Most of them, as you see in the graphics, were female. And regarding the age, we had, it was quite balanced. Uh, we had the, the lowest group was the people from 25 to 34, and then it was quite balanced. Uh, middle-aged people and some were over 45. That means more experience, but not necessary in the craft business. Uh, the craft enterprises that participated were created, a third of them in the last year, and uh, two thirds of them were created, were less than five years in the business. Um, okay. The, they were coming from different craft sectors. Most of, the, most of them were from the textile world, but we had, we had also from jewelry, ceramics, stone, and also from like a group that we called, a category that we called like others, where 
we couldn't define exactly what, what they were making. There we are. Then we had also some people from the, um, wood, uh, the wood sector, also leather and natural fibers. Um, participants came from mostly all over Spain. We have 17 regions in Spain and they came from 13 of them. So it's, it was quite balanced in that sense. And now I would like to share it with you. Um, we made like, also like, like like in Ireland, we, we asked the people about the, the program. So as you know, AOE is a business school. So we do trainings and we always evaluate the trainings and the average of similar trainings at AOE is 4.46. And the crafting business program was higher than that. It was 4.55. Uh, for a first edition of a program, this is really good, and we are really happy about this result. Um, regarding the trainers, they also they they were also very good valorated. The highest rated trainer had an average of four point eighty six, and the lowest rated trainer four point eighteen, which is really good for for this first edition of, of a program that was never done and that was really difficult to adapt to these times. Um, I'm going to give you some, some opinions of the, of the participants on the tutors. So I'm just going to read them. Um, one said, he has focused a lot on the world of crafts and our needs, very useful. I have to say that most of the, our trainers came from the business world. That means they were not specialized in, in craft businesses, but we really asked them to please um, adapt to the craft businesses to their reality because they are really small and they have other issues than a normal business. And we are very glad that they just did that and they achieved to, to, to convey with, with these small businesses. Another uh, student said he has orientated each one towards their most optimal business model. In my case, it has been like that, but without giving his opinion or forcing any option, he's a good coach. Another one said she was patient in explaining things to us as many times as necessary and provided a lot of, of information and resources. This is also something very important. And uh, last one, she, they said very valuable contributions, but we need more hours for this subject. As uh, Caroline said, uh, most of them always need, want and need more. I know this course was really, uh, really compact and we had many things to, to explain and to share, but uh, we have always lack of time and you, can, you could spend a lot of time um, explaining and going into this in, in this, um, these programs. And I'm going to share now opinions on the training itself. And one student say, this program covers a basic need of the craft sector. It provides it with tools, information, and knowledge of the business world we, we, where we like it or not, it's our world too. And this makes us stronger, more competitive, and more aware of the possibilities we have. That's a key issue because most perhaps people don't think them, uh, don't see themselves as businesses, and they are a business. Um, another opinion was uh, one, one student say it's a very success, successful selection of content and teachers. Another one said, the classes are recorded and then you can intervene whenever you want and interact live with your classmates or teacher. This is one of the big advantages of doing an online course is that you have always all the information and all the recorded hours uh, teaching classes, you have them in the platform. So you can access it whenever you want. If you, want, if you can sleep at four o'clock in the morning, you can access it. If you want at midday when you have lunch, you can just log in and, and check all, all of this. Um, now to finish, uh, another 
uh, other opinions we had, uh, this one, for instance, says 100% recommended all the training, the teachers, the time organization, the content, and the format. Thanks. Another one said, this program has been a gift for me. <laughs> and um, as always, another one says, a great initiative. I would like them to be able to do more in-depth sections, even if they are shorter courses in some of the fields such as marketing or internationalization. We saw that in with 50 hours, you can't have a big program with all the information you need. You, you get the clue issues. But if you want to get more, I just put here some resources. At AOE, we have a wiki where you can find a lot of information on different uh, on the different um, units that, that were uh, teached in this in this program. And this may be useful resources for you. And as well in the Crafting Europe website, you have also a section on online resources, which can be just checked by everyone. And I mean, that's it. I, I, I don't want to extend myself. I would like our participants to, to give an opinion of on what the course was for them. And we will have now Ana Yueca, who is a ceramicist from Valencia, who will share the, her presentation. Um, hello. Hi. Hi, Anna. Hi, Anna. Hi. Mm. Oh, sorry. Okay. Right, it's okay? Yes. 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 It's okay. Uh, thank you for that opportunity to share my, my experience. Uh, my name is Ana Yueka. I am a ceramist and I make pieces that go between utilitarian and artistic ceramics. I live in Valencia, a sunny and warm city located to the Mediterranean coast. In fact, my studio is very close to the sea. So I investigate the roads and Mediterranean cultures, I support the passionate character of people that live on the shore and defend uh, the local identity formed form by many destinations. Uh, my, my inspiration is the traditional ceramic of my region, the green and copper, as you see, and the old white, its color, and I love its symbols. Vale. But uh, I also inspire me uh, people's lives, cons their concert and their feeling. My pieces don't want uh, to modify the spaces, but they want to modify moments. When uh, um, I start the program, I know I want to increase my finances skill and internationalization skills. And without the adapt, this program exceeded my expectation. Through the course, I have learned many things, focus, planning, marketing, but the most, most important thing le or lesson is that I learned to value my work financially. I learned to make other people understand it. I was able to raise praise and I made my community understand this change. I have also improved my international skill, especially getting to know how to spot and select the most interesting markets for me. And afterward, making a project to access this market. Uh, for me, it has been a great experience. I would like to highlight that the participation of colleagues has always been very interesting. I think we all want to learn and um, that is why we, we were always very participatory. Uh, it's a very good point to swap or share skills and knowledge. Uh, in fact, no, we are connecting and sharing information and, and knowledge. And also highlight the quality of the teachers they were very generous with us 
I'm very grateful for, for your help in this special moment for us. Um, really, I hope this program can help more artists and craft, craftsmen. We are a collective who need a skill in business management and empowerment because imagination and doing things right uh, come standard. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Shana. And we're going to the next speaker, Santiago. Can you hear us? Hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, thank you for inviting me to the seminar. One second. Can you see now the presentation? Yes, now I can see. It's okay. Uh, well, my name is Santiago Besteiro. I am a craftsman and designer, and I live and work in a rural area in the northwest of Spain. Um, Santiago Besteiro Design is a craft studio of creation and research, whose main uh, objective is to explore the aesthetic and material possibilities of leather in combination with other natural materials, such as wood or stone. I design and develop with the help of my partner, Maria, different kinds of leather goods and leather objects for interior design, such as furniture and sculpture. Um, why I did this course? Uh, because when I finished uh, fine arts and design studies, I decided to unite my passions and skills in a project that became my job. I started in 2018, developing a collection of bags and purses uh, that I sold in fairs and markets uh, during the past three years. Last year gave me time to think and I found this course as the opportunity to train and solve problems with professionals in order to continue uh, advancing in aspects of my craft uh, business. And with this experience, I have uh, learned how to analyze my business. Uh, I have learned to know where I am most valuable in my business and how to create a strategy to be able to communicate the values that I want to reflect with my work. Values like uh, quality, sustainability, and honest business. This training has allowed me to advance in aspects uh, such as international internationalization, grow as a brand, and locate uh, new, sales, uh, new sales channels. I have acquired new organizational habits that help me to have more control over my business. In short, it has been a great learning experience thanks to the teachers and colleagues. And it is the ideal training to advance in any business. So I encourage everyone to do it. Um, Thank you very much for listening and have a, nice, uh, have a nice day. Thank you very much. And, and thank you for yeah. uh, to Ireland and to Spain for a great speech. Now I think it's a great time for a break of 20 minutes. And then we get, uh, we'll get back uh, to our uh, participants. So thanks everyone. Yeah, if you want to um, to all take a, a quick short break and then as Elizabeth said, we will be reconvening um, shortly. Thanks very much.
Springs. So we can move on to UK. Hi, Jill. I can hear you. Hello. Hi. Hi. So you can start. Okay, so I hope everybody can see that. Yes. So, um, I don't work for the Crafts Council. So, in delivery of Hot House, um, the core team does a certain element of it, and um, the content of quite a lot of the sessions is subcontracted to people outside the Crafts Council. So, um, I'm Jill Fulis. I'm a director of a company called Aperte Limited. I work very broadly across the entire creative sector, so I'm not just focused on the craft sector. I work with every kind of art form, with organisations from the very large all the way down to the very small. Um, and in delivering Hot House, um, I work with a colleague of mine called Ellen O'Hara. So there are two of us who work together. And for the past couple of years, um, this is what we have contributed to Hot House. So we do a half day business modeling session. We do a full day finance day. And then we also, um, at the, towards the end of the program, um, sit with Caroline and her colleagues at, at Crafts Council and witness the business plan presentation. So, we, we get to meet everybody at the beginning. So the business modeling uh, sessions last year happened now um, in February. Finance day was in March. And then the final business plan presentations would normally have been in July, but actually ended up being in August. Um, just to say that uh, here, we don't use the business model canvas. Um, we use uh, a process called the ModFin system and that is something that Ellen and I have created specifically for the creative, cultural and mission led sector. And it works for individuals as well as organisations. And it's a, a way of um, uh, interrogating your existing business model in a way that allows you to understand the various business lines you have and in our experience individual designer makers can have 10 different things going on allows you to help to interrogate that understand how they fit together how they fit together financially how they fit together creatively and it's a business modeling process but it's also a financial modeling process that sits underneath and uh, we've created that and that's what we use when we're talking about business modeling with um, people in hot house uh, now, normally, uh, all of this happens face to face. Um, so here is a hot house session uh, in uh, uh, February 2019 in Birmingham. And here you can see the participants uh, using our Modfin system and creating their own individual business models. And the way we work traditionally is uh, highly interactively. Um, we we get people to do very creative things with the creation of their business model. The uh, finance session is very, very interactive. We turn up with great big boards and we do a live cash flow modeling process on the great big boards. And all of that's great. What happened last year was that we did both business modeling sessions, one for each cohort. As Caroline told you earlier, there are two cohorts of, of 13. We did the first finance day face to face and in between that and a week later when we were due to do the second finance day, everything closed down. So we had to very quickly move to presenting that highly interactive, highly participative finance day online with about 24 hours notice. So that was a huge challenge. I think it's fair to say that a year ago, I wouldn't have been doing this. 
a year ago, I didn't know how to use Zoom. I never did video calls. I would work on the telephone or I would work face to face with people. So this was a huge baptism of fire, hugely difficult, um, very difficult for us, but also very difficult for the participants who, you know, with a day's notice, stayed at home and didn't travel to Manchester. Um, not all of them are used to dealing with the, the online platform. I think we're all experts now, but, you know, a year ago, we definitely weren't. And uh, so these are the things I've learned about that transition from face to face to online. The first thing is buy a decent camera. Um, I had a little camera at the bottom of my laptop that was really uncomfortable to use. I now sit facing the window so the light's good. But that's kind of superficial. But what we realized after that full day of finance um, was that actually um, you can't do a whole day on Zoom or on Teams or whatever the platform is. So it's, if you're going to move a, a full day workshop online, you have to chunk it down. You have to break it down into smaller pieces. We've learned that no session should be longer than three hours. Two is better than three. We've learned that everything takes longer um, to deliver online. There's something about the platform, there's something about the slight disconnectedness of it that means that you lose some of the immediacy that happens when you're working in a room with people. Uh, we've learned it's good to have two of you because it's very difficult to manage the chat and all the rest of it and do the speaking. Um, we've learned that if you want to have a truly interactive session, you need to limit it to eight participants. And we've also learned that people need a lot more time offline to, to kind of internalise what they've learned online. And Noel earlier talked about that challenge of learning the finance language. You know, that, that is quite um, difficult. You know, we, we, uh, the way that we dealt with that in a face-to-face -face situation is that we gave everybody a workbook to work through certain activities before we came into the session. But finance in particular seems to um, benefit from being broken down into smaller chunks over a longer period of time. So people have time to internalize that, to work with it in between the various chunks. And I think, Laura, in Spain, you talked about people needing a bit more time for finance. I think certainly when you move it online, that's definitely, definitely true. Um, what we found at the end of the process was that everybody had still benefited from the program, even though they'd started off face to face and had to pivot into online and that they, uh, everybody, without exception, had made great strides forward in the creation of their business plan. Hadn't necessarily gone the way that they'd originally anticipated when they joined the programme. Lots of people had to pivot uh, their own business models in the process, but absolutely everybody had really developed and we feel really privileged to be able not just to be in there at the, at the beginning of the process, but also at the end. So that was all I all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. And now we are going to Pratima. Hello everyone. I'm Pratima Kramer and I make handcrafted ceramic sculptures. I grew up in Gujarat, India, a region known worldwide for textile and embroidery. Though my background is in microbiology, I began my journey into ceramics only a few years ago. Understanding ceramics from the business perspective was uncharted territory for me until I was accepted as a participant on Craft Council's Hothouse program in the year 2020. It has been a huge learning opportunity for me and that's what I'd like to share today. The programme supports and trains craft makers in their early career to develop the business and equip them with the tools to progress in the wider world. The very first session was about finding out what would be the core value of our own business 
To have that clarity was the start of the planning for future, long and short term. So our training began with that clarity in mind. One of the important tools I now have is having the ability to tell my story of why, with confidence and capturing my audience's interest, leaving them with wanting to know more about my work and me as a creator. The skill is a crucial element to my business as my work is a language of self-expression. The skill has been particularly important at the stage where I am now, where people and the industry are investing in me as well as in my work. And of course, yes, the business plan. I didn't even think I needed one, but to my surprise, now having done one, I'd like to say everyone should have one. Initially, I thought it was all about pluses and minuses and the figures, and really, creativity and figures don't go together in the mind of creator. We all just love to create. But this is where Craft Council's training plays a huge role. It's not all about loss and profit, but the vision of clarity and the goals for the years ahead. So massive thank you for leading us onto the right path of being successful. Some of the changes I have implemented as, as a direct result of my training is refreshing my presence in digital media, including new website design, working with photographer to get the best images to present my work in digital world, and understanding how to create social media platform to reach my target audiences. Finally, Craft Council helped me to understand that I should never shy away from telling my story. My craft is a manifestation of my identity, so no matter how insignificant it seems, I should tell my story with confidence. I would like to thank Craft Council for giving me the tools to fulfil my dream of having a sustainable creative business and it's such an invaluable experience to be part of a community of like-minded people that all help and support each other and raise each other up presently and hopefully in the future too. Наш проект назывался Crafting Business Maker School. Мы делали это совместно со нашим стратегическим партнером бизнес школой МИМ. Здесь вы можете увидеть на нашем слайде всех преподавателей и спикеров, которые выступали на этом проекте. Этот проект был также чрезвычайно актуальным ввиду того, что вопросы с обучения ремесленников, бизнес обучения ремесленников, мы начали с бизнес школой МИМ обсуждать еще в 2018 году, и мы обсуждали возможность запуска для всех секторов ремесленничества, которые находятся под одним зонтом. То есть мы осознавали, осознаем всю ценность, которую несут ремесленники для экономики, формируя добавленную стоимость, и на этом выстроили стратегию такого обучения, в то же время понимали всю специфичность знаний и подготовки, которая нужна им в их деле. Подготовка к реализации, которая происходила в 2020 году, показала очень высокий интерес ремесленников к образованию. Был очень большой запрос на обучение, нам было очень сложно провести отбор такого небольшого количества участников. Это говорит о том, что происходит мощная перезагрузка локальных рынков. И в связи опять-таки с COVID-19 мы заметили, что во всех странах локальные рынки стали стремительно развиваться. Вместе со школой МИМ, экспертами, которых вы видите здесь, экспертами также платформы Recreate, мы стремились адаптировать программу к укреплению позиций ремесленников на локальном рынке, помочь им не просто создавать свой виртуальный профайл, а серьезно наполнять его всеми своими достижениями в ремесле и своей качественной профессиональной историей. В то же время на уровне диджитализации, в связи с тем, что происходил Бум диджитализации у нас подвел к пониманию того, что массивная часть учебного плана должна базироваться на, уже на современной, современной ремесленной стратегии, которая вплетается уже в современную диджитал реальность. 
При отборе и запуске участников мы также выбрали коммуникационную платформу, диджитал платформу WeCreate, которая позволила проводить электронный отбор участников. Запустив проект, мы стремились пробудить в участниках мощное трансформационное стремление к их, именно к их экстраординарности. Такая потребность, как известно, живет в каждом из нас, и вот каждого из нас делает особенным. А в особенности это важно в деятельности и в, в деле ремесленника. В процессе обучения мы создали обстановку погружения именно в острую, острые углы бизнеса, которые, которые, с одной стороны, вызывали некая нервозность, возможно, некоторое раздражение, но, с другой стороны, мы вдохновляли и мотивировали, чтобы на полную мощность раскрыть их внутренний потенциал. Мы также стремились в нашей школе, также стремились в нашей школе помочь им избавиться от ограничивающих убеждений, которые мешали им двигаться вперед, чтобы показать, что творчество и бизнес – это не взаимозаменяемые категории, что это взаимодополняющие элементы их настоящего и будущего успеха. То есть мы погружали их сознание, сознание в то, чтобы они создавали свой личный бренд под единым зонтом мирового ремесленного бренда. И наша организация, наши эксперты, бизнес-школа МИМ, о которой далее расскажет Елена, приняли участие в адаптации программы для ремесленников и подошли очень тщательным образом к этому и при помощи подбора гест-спикеров, которые помогли дать, скажем, опять же, дать, дать вот такие мотивирующие истории, которые показали, как, к чему может прийти могут прийти они, если они будут развивать свои бизнес-навыки, бизнес-подходы. И э, о том инновационном новом типе мышления, которого сегодня так не хватает э, ремесленникам. Потому что мы всегда понимали, что говоря о новом контексте ремесленника, мы должны говорить о профессионализме, креативности, экстраординарности, уникальности и, естественно, самодостаточности. Другими словами, мы поставили перед собой весьма амбициозную цель, Здесь вы можете увидеть вот эти этапы трансформации, которые проходили ремесленники на протяжении обучения. И мы хотели, стремились максимально раскрыть как личностный, так и управленческий потенциал ремесленников на пути к их трансформации собственного бизнеса и максимально приблизить их к вот состоянию вот этого истинного благополучия, well-being. Здесь мы, я покажу вкратце, почему, что, что делала школа уникальной. Да, то есть здесь есть три составляющие. Мы взяли за основу крафтинг бизнес программу, также разработали ремесленная палата Украины разработала специальную ремесленную книгу и рабочую тетрадь, которая является набором опросников, которые помогают ремесленнику ответить на самые определить болевые точки, сильные и слабые стороны именно крафтового бизнеса. И также благодаря бизнес-школе МИМ у нас была, есть возможность вывести это на уровень вот такой IQA-сертификации, о которой нам также расскажет Елена. Спасибо за внимание. Леночка, вы здесь? Не слышно вас? Да, я здесь. Одну минуту сейчас. Шерим экран. Минутку. Так. Видно все? Да, все видно. Сейчас Прекрасно. запустить на полный экран и можем начинать. Сейчас попробуем. Минуточку. Отлично. Все. Здравствуйте, дорогие участники этой прекрасной, вдохновляющей, очень интересной конференции. От имени бизнес-школы МИМ приветствую вас и рада оказаться в вашем обществе. МИМ – бизнес-школа, яка наличие понад 30 лет своей истории и является надежным партнером для всех видов бизнеса в Украине. Наразі мы имеем 
майже всі міжнародні акредитації і є найбільш титулованою, найбільш успішною бізнес-школою України. Ми маємо дуже потужний, потужну спільноту МІМ АЛАМ, яка налічує понад 7 тисяч випускників. І зараз ми дуже раді з того, що наші ремісники долучилися до цієї спільноти і також стали мімаламні після успішного завершення нашої школи. Я є академічним директором цієї програми від бізнес-школи, одночасно викладачем МІМ Київ. І можу сказати, що ця програма є для нас надзвичайно цікавою, вона була для нас надзвичайно амбітною, тому що місією нашої школи є послідовне створення критичної маси відповідальних лідерів. І Програма CBMS, вона якраз про те, що українські ремісники – це та рушільна сила, яка може створювати дійсно економічний прорив, яка може рухати країну вперед. Для цього надзвичайно важливо нам бути самоідентифікованими, нам важливо об'єднатися і важливо мати базу візнання з ведення бізнесу. І саме тому ми долучилися до програми і адаптували її під потреби наших ремісників. За допомогою конкурсу було відібрано 30 людей до програми і 27 з них завершили проєкт успішно. Ми вважаємо, що це надзвичайно хороший результат і ми пишаємося фінальними проєктами наших випускників. Можемо сказати, що я як тютор можу сказати, що успіхом програми в першу чергу є внутрішня мотивованість учасників до навчання. Дійсно, для дорослих людей це додаткові виклики, це додаткові складності, це час, який необхідно приділити, і сили. І тому ми дуже раді з того, що 27 випускників отримують сертифікати бізнес-школи, сертифікати міжнародного зразка, сертифікати, які визнані у всьому світі. Що я можу сказати як тютор із нашої пілотної школи, які висновки, які інсайти я для себе зробила? По-перше, виявилося, що надзвичайно важливим є модуль, який присвячений самопрезентації учасників. Дійсно, це потребує багато часу, але разом з тим це дає можливість створити оцей самий цінний нетворкінг і емоційно розвантажити групу на початку роботи, налаштувати її на спільну і дружню атмосферу. Другий момент, дуже важливий, коли до цього модулю долучаються викладачі, які надалі будуть супроводжувати учасників в програмі. Якщо вони слухають презентацію учасників, вони занурюються в їх діяльність, це допоможе їм краще підбирати кейси для того, щоб розбирати основні аспекти бізнесу, про які вони говоритимуть надалі кожен на своєму тематичному занятті. А можете слайд переключити далі? Так. Наступний момент дуже важливий – це те, що онлайн-формат з одного боку дає можливості, а з іншого боку певні обмеження. Безумовно, можу погодитися із спікерами, які були переді мною, цілий день в онлайні було б працювати надзвичайно важко. Тому той формат, який обрали ми, цілком себе виправдав. Ми працювали два дні на тиждень по чотири академічні години. З іншого боку, онлайн-формат дав нам можливість об'єднати крафтарів з усієї України. Україна – велика, територіально велика країна. І ми б не змогли реалізувати такий унікальний контент в офлайні. А наразі саме онлайн дозволив нам з усіх куточків України об'єднатися в спільний освітній простір. Крім того, Такий цікавий момент. З одного боку, група була дуже різноманітна. Хтось лише починав свій бізнес, хтось розвивається дуже швидко і прагне його масштабувати. 
І з одного боку, не завжди було легко підібрати такий контент, який задовольняв усіх повністю. А з іншого боку, наші учасники навчилися ділитися досвідом один з одним, навчилися слухати один одного і допомагати. І мені здається, що це є великою цінністю нашої програми. Критично важливим була можливість задавати викладачам запитання не лише під час модулів, а й в процесі взаємодії між навчальними модулями. У нас була досить така жива телеграм-група, в якій можна було задавати питання, вирішувати організаційні питання, і вона дуже нам допомагала насправді. Дуже корисним для онлайнової програми є включення інтерактивних елементів. Спробували попрацювати в малих групах, були москові штурми, були розбори кейсів, були дискусії. Це дуже підживлює онлайн-формат. Також запрошували спікерів, які своїми успішними прикладами надихали наших учасників і давали їм відповідь на запитання, які їх дійсно турбували. Величезне значення мала підтримка експертів від ремісничої палати. Пані Марина Попович та Елізавета Мірошніченко весь час були присутні під час навчального процесу і так само вдавали зворотній зв'язок учасниками між навчанням. Тому учасники весь час відчували від них підтримку і могли задавати свої запитання. Це дійсно було дуже хорошим. Ця практика менторингу була дуже корисною для учасників. Також дуже цінним надбанням для наших учасників я вважаю крафтову книгу. Тобто та книга, яку вони отримали, є дійсно унікальним, не побоюся цього слова, інструментом для самопізнання, для самоідентифікації, для того, щоб поглиблювати свої розуміння фінансового стану, маркетингової стратегії, для того, щоб розуміти, які стратегічні орієнтири ти маєш і яке місце, яку нішу ти займаєш в крафтовому ринку України. Ми маємо надію, що поступова робота з цією книгою і подальше, після завершення програми, вона дасть можливість нашим, випускникам відчувати себе більш впевнено і бути більш успішними в справжньому дійсному бізнес-середовищі. Також можу сказати, що дійсно слухачі дуже відповідально підійшли до фінальних проєктів. І обов'язковою умовою отримання сертифікату, який дійсно є цінним, був захист, індивідуальний захист фінальних проєктів, і наші ремісники близьковично з ним справились. Ну і наостанок можу сказати, що наша країна надзвичайно талановита, і ми віримо в те, що перша Craft Business Makers School у поєднанні з нашою бізнес-школою – це лише перша ластівка, і надалі, враховуючи те, який інтерес зараз викликає ця школа, який резонанс ми маємо, надалі ми матимемо також цей подібного роду проекти, і ми будемо масштабувати їх, можливо, вийдемо в міжнародний простір і з задоволенням зробимо якісь спільні змішані формати з іншими талановитими ремісниками по всьому світу. Дякую за увагу. Дякую, Оленко. А там далі ще один слайд, там, здається, такі інтерактивні наші скріни, як виглядав процес навчання зсередини. Так, дякую дуже за виступ, і тоді завершите демонстрацію екрану, і ми переходимо до Юлії Яванжи. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Я сразу демонструю екран, да? Да. Все видно, все работает, да? Работает. Здравствуйте, меня зовут Юлия Янджи. Я изначально я художник, я долго занималась живописью, скульптурами, и, и это я никогда не рассматривала как основной вид деятельности, именно как бизнес. В большинстве 
случае в наших в творческих душах есть такая мысль, что это только лишь для творчества. Параллельно я занималась как работой, это в дизайне разрабатывала брендинг и дизайн интерьеров. Мне посчастливилось 10 лет назад попасть на, на чудесно образовательный такой маленький проект, в котором мне пришло потрясающее осознание, что из любого творчества можно сделать бизнес. И с этого начался мой старт уже такого бесстрашия, что если структурно подойти к любому творчеству, то, то из этого можно сделать хороший проект. И весь мой предыдущий опыт э, дал мне возможность э, основать свой бренд. И э, вместе с Евгением Миличенко мы основали э, компанию Yonji Objects. Э, и первая наш, э, наша коллекция – это была коллекция светильников из переработанной бумаги совсем молодой бренд предшествовала ему арт-проект и вот клеточная практика из большого количества созданных модулей мы показывали его в, в арт-индустрии в институциях в, в Одессе, откуда я родом потом в Киеве это показывали на больших мероприятиях и из этого проекта я вот вывела вот такой уже интерьерный проект совершенно с другим составом из переработанной бумаги, многофункциональные светильники, многофункциональные в смысле, что, что кто-то светит точечно, кто-то распределяет свет по всей комнате разных размеров, многослойный, с, там, с разным количеством источников света. И когда в 2017 году мы его основали, в 2018 году нам посчастливилось представить украинский бренд на международной выставке Maison Objet в Париже, что дало нам хороший старт и толчок веры в себя, потому что мы как, как, как молодые создатели маленького продукта очень сомневались в себе и в эстетической составляющей, и сомневались, может это нравится только лишь нам. Но когда мы показали на Скобашу арене, мы увидели и ощутили хороший фидбэк и устроить и строить этот бизнес. И с этого времени активно участвовать в украинских выставках и популяризировать этот продукт в Украине и перевоспитывать нашу целевую аудиторию в Украине, потому что немножечко ментально и культурно, к сожалению, отстаем от, от европейского общества в плане. В Европе легко принимают светильники из бумаги, а в Украине нам приходилось все-таки это внедрять, говорить, что показывать, как легко оно в, в, в уходе, что это плюс еще переработанный материал. И мы уже намного расширили свою аудиторию и стали такие устойчивый узнаваемый бренд в Украине. Чтобы мне было интересно не оставаться дизайнером одного материала и там, одной формы, а двигаться дальше. И в 2019 году родилась коллекция керамической Тамакаш. Это очень такие звучащие меня слышно, а то мне показывается, что что-то Слышно, меня... слышно, Юля, да, все да? хорошо. Да-да-да, все Юля. хорошо. Это уже такие открытые абажуры с тонкой керамикой. Прикосновение, при прикосновении он дает потрясающее звучание. И оно имеет совершенно уже как бы другой функционал, по-другому освещает пространство, совершенно другая стилистика. Но при этом они прекрасно дружат вместе. И, и украшает э, пространство. А дальше я хотела рассказать об счастливом случае, как мы попали э, на образовательный проект Crafting Business, и э, что, э, как, как я изначально упоминала, что очень, э, очень сложно было поверить 
то, что творчество, в смысле ремесло может приносить доход, и как действительно нам сложно в нашей стране, и сейчас в условиях кризиса и карантина, когда, к сожалению, не, не очень поддерживаются бизнесы, не то что развиваться, а выдерживаться на плаву, то при, мы впервые попали в окружение подобных нам ремесленников, которые из своего детища создают большие проекты. И, и вот эта потрясающая энергия, которая нас сплочала, и когда мы могли кейсы других учеников очень вдохновляли нас. Мы, конечно же, находили много общего, когда, ну, когда даже они задавали вопросы учителям. Мы в себе в записочки вносили э, рекомендации, советы и микрошаги, которые мы будем совершать еще. И, и отдельно еще э, благодарность за, за подбор спикеров. Каждый спикер очень структурированно доносил информацию и просто брать и делать. К сожалению, мы как ремесленники-основатели, у нас почти у всех очень маленькие бизнес-команды, и мы не можем ну, не иметь 20 рук и больших инвестиций стартануть и сделать все моментально, как часики. Поэтому это такой долгий путь, и, и в нашем постоянно изменяющемся мире этот путь вечен, и, но, но все равно мы испытываем, конечно же, огромнейшее удовольствие, работая и совершенствуя свой продукт, оттачивая его, делая его все прекрасней, сайты, сайты все понятнее, каталоги все, 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 все шире, доступнее, понятнее. Эм, так, 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 так. Ну, в принципе, э, вот, вообще понимание необходимости вот, в комплексном подходе, квалифицированного подхода вот, к маркетингу, маркетингу, что как... Эм, как также повлиял сильно карантин, как нужно диджитализироваться, как нужно выходить на рынки, какое огромнейшее конкурентное сыродовище образовалось, потому что резко все вы, выплыли в онлайн и все ресурсы переполнены, тебе очень сложно еще конкурировать. Это также, к счастью, дает совершенно... Не то, что идти, нужно бежать еще быстрее, чтобы, чтобы твой продукт был заметен и пользовался успехом, и очень много, конечно же, конкурентов. Мы полтора года назад приехали из своего небольшого города на берегу моря в, в столицу, здесь и так ощущается, что нужно бежать-бежать, а карантин, конечно же, это все усиливает. Ну, и благодаря а, образовательной программе очень много мы получили ответов, и за что хочется сказать спасибо. Также благодарность ремесленной палате Украины, которая поддерживает бизнес-образование и дальнейшее развитие этого проекта. И напоследок мне хочется пожелать всем смелых творческих идей и бизнес-реализации, финансового успеха и поддержки от их стороны и партнеров, потому что мы все молодцы и а искусство и красота делать мне лучше и добрее. Спасибо. Спасибо, Юлия, за эту красоту. На это можно смотреть бесконечно. Поэтому даже не хочется, чтобы вы завершали презентацию, но переходим к следующему спикеру, посмотрим еще на одну красоту. Сергей, вы с нами? Да, я с вами. Сейчас я заширю экран. Меня слышно, видно? Слышно, видно. Можете начинать. Спасибо. Спасибо. Меня зовут Сергей Горбань. Моя мастерская с 1992 года работает в городе Днепр. 
мы являемся производителями керамики, которая обжигается в дровяной печи. Мы используем старинные технологии обжига, используем наши отечественные глины, самые лучшие наших донецких месторождений и развиваем вот это вот направление всевозможных обжигов с использованием пепельных глазурей, с использованием эффекта, который дает именно дровяной обжиг. Мастерская наша, она, да, вот на фотографии мы видим сейчас нашу большую дровяную печку, она самая большая в Украине на сегодняшний день. Вот мы производим очень крупную и очень качественную керамику. Вот. А мастерская в течение последних 10-15 лет работает в формате учебного центра, где участники могут научиться работать на гончарном круге, освоить какие-то навыки работы с глиной. То есть работает школа, которая является ну, таким вхождением, дверью в, в этот бизнес и в это увлечение. Вот. На территории мастерской также разбит сад, который возник на месте стихийной свалки. Вообще вся территория мастерской, она развивалась эти 28 лет на территории, которая была, в общем-то, стихийной свалкой. Вот. И поэтому пришлось очень много усилий приложить для того, чтобы она превратилась вот в такую цветущую территорию, которая вдохновляет. Мы потратили очень много сил, времени на это. У нас прекрасный сад, который в прошлом году стал лауреатом на всеукраинском конкурсе ландшафтных садов и архитектуры, вот, чем мы очень гордимся. У нас не только самая большая печка, у нас еще очень красивый, можно сказать, вертикальный сад, потому что перепад высот на территории очень большой, там около 10 метров перепад, и с нижней точки сад выглядит как вечно зеленая картина. Вот очень много благоухающих растений, которые выделяют эфирные масла, и вот вся атмосфера сада и мастерской, она строится таким образом, чтобы вдохновлять людей, чтобы их расслаблять и ну, вот как-то направлять их творческую энергию в нужное русло. Вот. Мастерская является таким трамплином, благодаря которому многие стали заниматься керамикой. Кто-то вдохновленный садом и всей территорией решил строить собственный дом, собственный сад. Мы очень тесно сотрудничаем с садовниками и проводим мастер-классы не только по керамике, но и по садоводству. Таким образом, мастерская она является своего рода такой экосистемой, которая включает в себя три направления. Это производство, обучение и, ну, назовем это, такой релакс и медитация. То есть люди, которые приходят к нам в мастерскую, они ощущают, что они попадают в некое другое пространство, другое измерение. Мы находимся в самом центре большого урбанистического города, но при этом атмосфера мастерской, она совершенно другая. Она позволяет людям отвлечься от того давления, которое совершает город на людей и переключиться с помощью мастер-классов, с помощью сада, с помощью запахов, которые человек слышит. То есть все работает на эту идею. Я хочу сказать, что я всегда рассматривал свою деятельность как некий бизнес. То есть я не, не, не занимался керамикой изначально в качестве, ну, скажем так, увлечения какого-то, которое потом переросло в бизнес. Я изначально относился к этому как к некому бизнесу. И поэтому для меня очень важно... Вот те навыки, которые я получил в школе, они добавили много интересных таких скиллов для ну, моему опыту, который, который уже развивается какое-то время, но время от времени вот нужно погружаться в подобные практики и совершенствовать свои навыки. Первое ощущение, которое вот было, когда мы 
все первый раз встретились в онлайне, это то, что спикеры, организаторы этой школы, они в тебе очень заинтересованы. Вот какая-то личная теплота и заинтересованность в нас. Вот это то, что было очень приятно и душевно. Вот. Дальше было общение, были, было множество интересных, множество такого опыта, который ну, где-то был трудным, где-то вызывал какие-то затруднения, но именно преодолевая эти затруднения, мы получали то, что, ну, ради чего мы туда, собственно, и пришли. Вот. Потому что все участники разные, у всех очень разные бизнесы, опыт разный, разные отношения. И э, вот для меня лично э, эта школа, она явилась возможностью посмотреть на себя со стороны, получить новые какие-то связи, новые знакомства, новый опыт. Вот, опыт общения, опыт участия в, в таких онлайн-трансляциях, онлайн-встречах. Ну, это очень важный и полезный навык на сегодняшний день, как выяснилось. Я думаю, что он будет актуален и в дальнейшем. Вот, вот эта дигитализация – это некий вызов, который… Ну, требует погружения во многие аспекты и э, требует приобретения новых навыков и э, очень важен и полезен э, для всех, кто занимается крафтом, кто занимается тем, чем занимаемся мы. Вот. Я хочу, пользуясь случаем, также сказать, что вот, э, опыт таких конференций, опыт таких встреч, он, безусловно, очень важен. И наша мастерская, она работает в формате организации таких встреч. И мы тоже можем быть некой платформой для того, чтобы подобные встречи уже вживую, да, после карантина, они тоже проходили в том числе и на нашей территории, потому что у нас есть для этого условия, у нас большой зал, который может вместить 60 человек, у нас гостевой дом на 5 номеров, где мы можем разместить гостей. И я надеюсь на сотрудничество, надеюсь на дальнейшее развитие проекта, я надеюсь участвовать в этом проекте, если меня пригласят в качестве спикера, и надеюсь, что опыт, который я приобрел за эти почти 30 лет работы в этой сфере, может еще кому-то помочь. И очень благодарен ремесленной палате Украины, которая организовала этот курс, бизнес-школе МИМ, безусловно, и программе Крафтинг Юроп. Спасибо. Спасибо, Сергей. Я вижу, что вас уже находят в Инстаграме. Уже пишут о том, что ваш Инстаграм нашли. Спасибо, Юлия, спасибо Сергею за такие вдохновляющие проекты. И мы надеемся, что все участники от Украины уже побегут знакомиться с, вашим, с вашими изделиями, приедут в гости. Но также надеемся, что все международные участники тоже обратят внимание на наших талантливых мастеров. Спасибо большое. Я... And we are going to next uh, session, questions and answers. And uh, Nicola, uh, can you hear me? Um, I'll actually can start the discussion oh. if that's okay, Elizabeth. I was just going to okay, say yeah. if all our panelists would like to turn their camera on, but perhaps stay muted until we, we come to them, just so everyone can see them. Um, if everyone wants to take a second and just do that. Uh, a huge thank you to everyone who has presented today. Some really wonderful presentations there. So I'm just going to start um, first of all by saying we've had a couple of kind of questions that are quite general about the program. So just a little explanation in case it wasn't clear earlier on. And um, obviously the hothouse program has been running a lot longer than the crafting Europe or the crafting business project so we very much got the expertise and the knowledge 
from Crafts Council UK who've been running the Hot House programme for many years and the crafting business was developed from that, from that programme. So each country has very much made it their own, as you've heard today, you know, they've um, they've obviously had to go either online with some of the courses, but they've also introduced their own guest speakers and taken their own angle on the course and on the programme um, and have tailored that to their own country. I think a specific question that we probably have for every country that has spoken so far today and that everyone wants to know is how they can apply for the second version um, or the second phase of a crafting business or hothouse. So for Caroline, for you, if um, I don't know if you want to share, have you any dates that you can let anyone know about? Yes, certainly. Thank you, Shauna. Um, we actually- You're and... just muted at the moment, Caroline, sorry. Sorry, is that better? Yeah, I, I can hear you, Caroline. Okay, sure. uh, cool, thanks. Um, oh yeah, perfect, sorry. Yeah, so our programme applications open from Monday, that's Monday the 1st of March, and the people have a month to apply. And then we'll be doing our uh, shortlisting, a selection and interviews in April. Um, and the program will start in early May. Brilliant, thank you so much. Um, another question, I'll keep it on you for a second, Caroline, because we have a few about Hot House. One, is there an age limit? Was one question. No, there's no age limit at all. This is purely about um, a craft business that is in its infancy. So for us, we look to support people between one and four years of setting up that craft business. And just to say that we have had people that have been in business for a long time, but they've come up with a new idea and, and they've been selected onto the program. So it's very much about a new craft business. Brilliant. Um, and then a few people are asking about your selection criteria uh, for Hot House, if you'd like to explain that a little bit more. Uh, yes, yeah, certainly. So um, it's for this year coming, uh, it will be for anybody based in the UK, so that includes our nations, Northern Ireland, Wales and Scotland. And we look for you to um, tell us about your business idea if it hasn't started yet or about your business if it has started. Um, what are your goals for that business? and also to share with us information about your current craft practice. So that can be through images and web, web links and um, uh, also a description. And then um, from that, we have some external moderators that look at all of the applications and put um, a review together. We use a, a platform called SurveyMonkey Apply, which is a really intuitive application platform. Um, and that allows um, anonymized reviewing. And then we can shortlist down to um, about 50. And then we invite uh, people to come forward for a short interview, just to tell us more about their, their business idea and and help us um, talk through their, their application uh, because um, it, it is a very popular program. So uh, unfortunately we can't support everybody that um, applies. So that's, that's why we have a selection process. But what I wanted to highlight this um, year is we're going to have a seminar series between May and September that'll be very focused on marketing and working with our European partners um, to sort of really hone in on the challenges that people are facing in this new sort of digital world and how we can support you. So those seminar series will be um, at regular intervals between those two months and to look out for that on the Crafting Europe website. Um, details will start to appear hopefully um, by April for when we start to kick off in, in May. Brilliant. Um, I'm not sure if, if everyone is able to see my screen. Are you able to see the website here at the moment? Yes. 
Great. Um, and it's because, again, a lot of people are just asking um, both in terms of Hothouse and obviously the rest of the crafting business programme. So I just want to explain to everyone that this is the Crafting Europe website. Please do go in and have a look. Any of our upcoming events, um, including the you know, seminar for today or any other opportunities, we post them all here. But we also have this section where we have split it up into each country, each partner country that is involved. And if you click on the relevant tabs, you can also find out every open call for either crafting business or iAtelier. So um, I know that this is probably a question that all partners are going to be asked today if, if they have their dates. So um, each partner, if you do have any concrete dates for when the open call will be launched on the website, please do just let me know and I can um, add that here. But obviously, um, for all the rest of our attendees, please just keep an eye on the website and on our social media and any open calls, we'll, we'll launch them all on that.